Right, so here's the Honda 400 4 case back from the engineers. Um, had some of the damage that was done around the front repaired and it's obviously all been shot blast and cleaned. Um, and what I've done with this, I've actually cleaned it with soap and water, degreased it, jet washed it so I know it's immaculately clean. So this is the assembly procedure according to the manual. I've got myself a full gasket set. Um, and you can see the camera movement is being done by my glamorous assistant. I bought a full seal kit from David Silver Spares, and that seal kit or the O ring kit comes from um, David Silver Spares as well as part of the gasket set. But what they don't tell you is the two main engine plug um, O rings are not included in there, so they've had to be buy, bought separately. In fact, these are the old ones. Um, I'm going to give it a go with them. For the reason being that if they do leak I can always take them out and redo it once the, the bike engine's all back together. Plus the other annoying thing, the full seal kit doesn't include this one here which goes in there which is frustrating, sorry it goes in that one there. So I'm actually going to have to buy that separately or ask them why it's not included in the kit. So this is the assembly, these are the, the shafts which I didn't dismantle because all the teeth and everything look fine. Um, the assembly is essentially a reverse of the uh, dismantling procedure. So the first thing I'm going to do is put these two little pins back in. Uh, one goes there. Oh, that one. And that one there. There you go. These are the two seals. I have actually oiled these all up, that's why there's all oil in here. Um, into this upper case. So that's the first one in there. Second one's there. So I've got my trusty oil can. So everything's been oiled as we assemble. It's already done actually. Right. So the first thing that needs to go in is this shaft here, this is the uh, drum selector. Oh just a note, there's a little pip on there, that's the neutral indicator because this needs to be in the neutral position as it goes back in. And it's got the bearing on the end there as well. So that's back in to its position. Now I've oiled this shaft and I did find that there's a little bit of hydraulic resistance pushing that into there it hasn't happened this time and that hole there is the neutral uh, switch hole on neutral indicator switch so that goes there and that's the position it needs to be in um, and the bearing presses in from this side if you can come around here Tina if you can get around here that bearing mm, yeah. just goes into there and pushes in there we are that's the bearing there so that's all in Next thing is the fork selector shaft. If you remember when I removed it, I pulled it out with a bolt. Well, that's still in there. Um, that goes into this hole here. Again, there's no bearings on this. This is the first fork selector. Again, with it being in neutral position. You can see the positions of these forks selectors. That's the next one. That's the next one. Just slides into position there. Lovely. Okay. And that's how they fit in the neutral position. Just going to take that screw out. Right, this is the next part that goes in. This is a new seal that I've just pressed on. That's the old one that I've taken off, and it's got a little. Um, lump on the end there which fits into that hole there so you need to make sure that you've got that in the right place if you put it on the wrong way around that won't line up with the hole um, so it needs to be on the inside just there and that means you get it in the right place if you remember that little pin I put in here well that lodges into that bit there so that's how that all goes in and it's fairly obvious you can see where those gear selector forks fit 
that just drops into place like that. Ah, typical. It needs to go around that way. And that's all dropped into place. Lovely. And that all moves nice and easily. Perfect. The next part is this one here. This little hole here mm -hmm. goes onto this little lump here. So if we orientate that down, and again you can see that fork selector just there fits in there nicely onto that shaft. He says, ah that's it, right we're in. So that gearbox is all in. Shaft's in, that's in. This bit here goes onto there and that's the oil seal for that. But of course, that's the old one. I'm going to have to get a new one. So, the final bit is if I just turn this case round here. This is the mechanism. You might have to come a bit down here, Tina. To hold the shaft in. Bolt goes there. That part holds the shaft. That part holds the bearing. You should be able to see that okay. So that just needs tightening up. So yeah, that little flange there holds that shaft in. This bit here holds the bearing in. Job done. These little bit here, when I've tightened that, they obviously just get squeezed into place with a pair of pliers. And that's that part done. Cut. Okay, so we continue building the 404 engine. So I've now installed this central uh, gear here um, with the bolt and the tabs are knocked over so that holds that in position. Um, this chain guide here is also being installed the end cap uh, bearing here with this bolt and tabs that bit of oil there is just with me liberally keeping that bearing covered in oil um, so the next stage really is to start building up the crank uh, which I'll do next I've got my trusty torque wrench here and I'm going to set this to peak mode so that uh, as I increase the torque setting up to what it should be um, it gives this sort of peak level so even though it might be set to two what I will do is you know I go each one one and increase to one and a half until the uh, torque setting is correct so now I'm going to start on the crank and uh, install the shells on the conrods right uh, I've installed the first conrod um, these shells have to come out and they just lift out very easy there's a little keyway there that comes out and you can literally just lift these old shells out like that they need to be scrupulously clean as everything does I've got some of this engineering stuff yeah so you can see there's a little key here and that matches with a little notch on the shell if you can see that so I've got the brand new shells here um, in actual fact I've actually had those cleaned as well because even though they're brand new in the packaging you don't know what's been done during the manufacturing process so it's a case of liberally oiling it all up this is the new shell which is going to go into the keyway and they just literally press in there so hold that one there and pop it in and it just slides round into position so that's perfect on that one and it's the same with the other side now it is important to note that on these these keyways must be on both sides facing the exhaust side so from this sense that would be on the top so that when the cranks installed that's going to face to the front of the engine which is the exhaust side and that's literally all you do do the same thing on there pop it on there and bolt it up making sure that the keyways are at the exhaust side and that's it uh, as soon as I've done that um, that cranks ready to go back into the case although obviously I need to put the main shells in um, I'm still waiting for this part 
uh, this is a bit manky so I can't really do anything more on this top half of the engine till I get this part so the next thing I'm going to do is start installing some parts into the lower crankcase the bearings and clips and I'll show you how I do that 